All right, we are here at the basin of my Vermi Hut indoor worm bin, and I've taken all the trays off, and what you see is the basin underneath here and this little protective barrier that's on top of that. And it has been 67 days since I've been down here. So I just want you to notice how few worms are on here. You may be like, oh my gosh, look at this, if you haven't seen it. But the way I run my bins with that bottom tray that's on here having dry bedding, you really don't get too much of castings and worms on here. And after 67 days, I can come in here and clean it out. Now the worms that get on here, they don't have too hard of a time getting back up into that tray, but the worms down here do. So you can see, this is the basin that if you were to pour water in or if you had too much moisture, it would all kind of gravity feed down here and then you could pour it out. But as you see, there's only three worms here and a little bit of castings. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this out and get these worms and these worms back into the top tray. And then we're gonna build up this vermi hut one layer at a time from the bottom to the top. So let's get started. All right, now that we've cleaned out the basin and the barrier, it's time to put on our most bottom level. And that is a brand new inoculating tray full of shredded cardboard and a little bit of shredded newspaper. And what I do is I basically store additional trays underneath full of dry cardboard so that they get inoculated. Eventually they will get moistened and soaked with any extra moisture that comes down gravity fed. And what this does is it kind of prevents a lot of liquid from going down into the basin if I ever overfeed or my veggie scraps have too much moisture. So this is now the very bottom tray. But let's go ahead and put on the tray that was the bottom tray, the previous inoculating tray. So believe it or not, this used to be the inoculating tray that was on the very bottom of this vermi hut. And it had been down there 76 days. So you can see as I pull from underneath, you see a lot of cardboard shreds. And what you're seeing on top is some of the castings that have fallen down from the tray above it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna kind of fluff it and you'll see some worms, just a few of them, kind of your scout worms that are curious all throughout this but it does not really contain too many worms relative to the three to 4,000 worms I have in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and fluff this up. All right, so a couple of observations I made. When I was digging under, I realized that I had put a single sheet of newspaper all the way on the bottom. That was a really good idea that I wish I had remembered for the previous one. So I think I'll do that again, or try to remember when I put the next inoculating tray on. Now this tray has been on here 67 days. In about two weeks time, it is going to be the next active feeding tray. Right now, I've got two trays on top of my vermi hut. I have the dry one you saw me put on, that is the new inoculating tray, and then this one, which is the old inoculating tray. So let's get the next tray up and that is the pre-harvest tray. That is the tray that's been here the longest, and it's the one that in two weeks time is going to get harvested and put into a cocoon nursery. So let's go ahead and get the pre-harvest tray. All right, so here we go. This is the pre-harvest tray. Now it has been in the system for 121 days so far, and actually it has been active on the first two layers for 121 days, but it spent 65 days as an inoculating tray. So in about two weeks time, we are going to harvest this of its castings and put them in a cocoon nursery to try and get all the babies out and to let a lot of the cocoons hatch. So let's kind of aerate this out and see if most of the food stuff that is in here has been consumed and turned into castings. So I'm just gonna kind of dig around and then we'll kind of evaluate. All right, so as I'm leveling this out, just wanna kind of go over some observations. The worms in here are really fat and there's a bunch of them. And that's because they are taking the last bit of food scraps and paper and breaking it down. We did find a little bit of banana stalk, that little end on the banana peel. And I took those out. I saw one little piece of plastic. I took that out. But you'll see a, a lot of worms down here. Again, way more than we had in the inoculating tray below it. And you'll see in the active feeding tray, we'll have the majority of worms. 
So I'm just leveling this out because we're going to put the last tray on top. And right now there's three trays, right? There's the pre-harvest tray, there's the old inoculating tray, and then the brand new dry bedding inoculating tray that we have in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the last tray on top. It's the tray that's been up there for about 45 days or so. And that's our active feeding tray. And we're going to go ahead and feed this bin. So here we go. All right, so here's the top and last most tray that we have on our vermi hut this is the active feeding tray so let's go ahead and pull up this newspaper which we put on top just to kind of retain moisture and then we're going to dive inside and check on that last feeding i'm going to bring in those pieces that we had from the other tray and i can see already there's a little bit of a depression here and we have put in a pretty massive feeding now this is a square tray and I'm not sure if we had fed this way or this way, so we're just gonna go ahead and dive right in. Now this tray itself has been on the system for 79 days as an inoculating tray and 58 days as an active feeding tray. So let's go ahead and dig in and I think the feeding zone is this way because I'm seeing a lot of the bedding and I'm starting to see the feeding zone and we really did give them a lot. I think we gave them a whole banana, some banana peels, and we gave them some strawberries and carrots. So I'm going to dig underneath and really get in here. And oh yeah, check that out. Check out all those worms. They are all throughout this feeding zone. And it has been about 12 days since we were in here last, so they've had plenty of time to attack that massive feeding we gave. And check it out right there, just a ton of worms. And this bin has both red wigglers and blue worms, and I see both kinds in here. Little chubbier ones are the red wigglers, and some of these thinner ones that are a little bit darker, same length, are the blue worms. Mm -hmm. And the castings just feel so great, light and fluffy. In about two weeks, this is gonna go and be the pre-harvest tray, and there'll be a tray put right on top of it to be the active feeding tray. Now in here, I'm seeing a lot of the bedding, and I'm also seeing a banana peel right there that they have actually just eaten down to just a thin piece of peel. They've eaten all the kind of food stuff off of it. And I'm also not seeing that full banana that we gave in here. They must have went right for that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and dig around and kind of see where all the worms are all throughout. And then we'll go ahead and set up our last feeding zone that we're going to have for this top tray. Oh yeah, the executive producer had a great point. Now, last time we were in here, we put in some Werbin Legend food. And Werbin Legend food is food that you hear on the internet or from... Other worm farmers that say don't put that in there and we put in an onion and we put in some peppers and I am not seeing either one of those and last time we also talked about some people that put meat in their bins and whole bags of mandarins so check out my last video and you can get links to those other worm farmers that have actually dispelled Werbin legends and one of the Werbin legends I kind of want to talk about this time around is the fact that some people say that worms don't actually eat the food, that they eat the microbes only. And this looks like a bit of a carrot right here. And that is actually a Werbin legend. So the fact is they do get a lot of their nutrients from the microbes that they ingest, but they eat food. You can look at time lapses from both AV and World Composting and you can see the worms actually come and eat food from a pumpkin or the different foodstuffs that they put in there. They're actually eating the food. So they'll ingest that food. And when they're eating that food, they're getting the microbes in their bodies also. And they're absorb absorbing the nutrients from them. A lot like cows do or even human stomachs do. So I just want to put that to rest that worms don't eat food. They only eat the microbes and the bacteria, etc. That is not the case. They will eat food, and by eat, we mean ingest it into their bodies. So, all right, let's keep digging around. All right, so a couple of observations. One of them is made from the executive producer, and she said that this is really high. So this will be our last feeding because I don't think we want to put any more food in here after this feeding because we're just running out of room. The other is that the castings that are in here are of great consistency. I mean, it feels great. The moisture level is great. The size of them is great. So I really love these worm towers for having a worm farm. 
they are so outstanding. And I've got affiliate links for this worm tower if you want to check out prices, that kind of thing. But I really enjoy this vermi head. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll put a little layer of cardboard down here and then we'll start our feeding. In goes just a little bit of cardboard since this is our last feeding. We don't want to overwhelm it, but it is going to spend at least 60 days down below as a pre-harvest tray before it ever gets harvested. So there we go, some dry bedding down. And now we're gonna add our feeding. And this is one of the containers that I have in my freezer and I just add food scraps in here when I am ready to clean up the kitchen and store some of the food scraps for freezing for my worm bin. So let's go ahead and start putting some of this stuff in here. We'll start with a banana peel and then we'll add a bunch of this lettuce stuff. And that's good because it contains a lot of moisture and will help to wet down the cardboard that's in there. We've got a lot of cucumbers cause it's just that season for growing cucumbers here. And then we'll add even more lettuce on top. Now all of this stuff has been previously frozen and thawed out just a little bit, but not enough that any kind of fruit flies could land on it and lay their eggs. Here's some more peppers, which again, we didn't see as Warbin legends in the last feeding. Some carrots. We'll put some apple parts, which are slow foods. And then how about this? We'll add a little Warbin legend food, which is citrus, mandarin orange on the top. So again, so that you can see that you can put citrus in and you just want to put it in limited quantities depending on how many worms you have. Again, I have about three to 4,000 worms in here. So this is a pretty good feeding for three to 4,000 worms. If you only have a hundred worms, then maybe just a little bit. If you've got a thousand, about half that or a third of that. And then again, as many as I have, I can feed like this, no problem. And I feed about once a week. So next come our amendments. And this is just spent coffee and tea grounds. And I just add a little layer of it and try, ooh, <laughs> try not to clump it up too much like I did right there but I always add this every feeding. It's just another food source for them. And I'm just gonna mix this in a little bit. I don't want it to clump up too much. Then the moisture can't get in there and the worms won't get to it. And then here is some pulverized eggshells that they use for grit. And I'll just kind of sprinkle a layer over it. And it also helps in my garden. And then finally, we'll put a little bit of pulverized oats on the food scraps here itself. And we'll also put it on the top after I bury this in. So I think that's a pretty good last feeding. I knew I was going to forget to add some of the old stuff from the last feeding zone, but I'll just put it on right here and we'll go ahead and bury this up. And if you've enjoyed this video, I appreciate you hitting the like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos. I've got two other bins. I've got a tiny worm bin, which right now I'm having a little bit of trouble with moisture control. It's a little bit too dry for my liking. And then also I've got an outdoor worm bin where I do lots of experiments and I've got about five to 6,000 worms in there. Although I gave 2,000 away, so I guess I need to start saying 4,000 worms. We gave some to a neighbor that had a sub pod. So here we go. This is their last feeding and it's a little bit humped up right here here. We're just going to put some pulverized oats on it and then the newspaper and then we'll be done. So I think I'll try to use the rest of these pulverized oats and these oats were just oats that were in my pantry that I let expire. In fact they were expired for four years before I found them. So definitely time to check my pantry and check yours see if you have any kind of expired grains that you can put in here. Anything like cornmeal, flour, that kind of thing, even bird seed to make into a worm chow. And then last but not least, we'll put our newspaper in here. And the next time we visit this worm bin, we are going to harvest the pre-harvest tray and we will empty the rest of the baby worms out of our cocoon nursery. So be looking for that in about a week. So I hope everybody's having a great day. Good luck with your worm bins and happy vermicomposting, everybody. Take care now. Well, I guess if we're doing this in reverse order, we might as well show me putting the lid on top. All right, have a great day.